Hi, I am Dr. Kim Sage. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to this video series. There's been a lot of videos you can check out called Wildly Loved, really just talking about what it would feel like to not be uh, a child of a, a very, uh, I should say, to not be carrying the pains of a wounded child inside as a result of a complicated childhood where love feels very restricted and constrained and confined, where instead you could feel more relaxed in your body, more wildly able to lean into loving yourself and loving others without so much rigidity or maybe too much flexibility, right? That there's just like, there's a space for you to just lean in and be who you are without all of the rules of childhood and all of those often detrimental adaptations, which is what this series is about. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell, and that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. Now, today's video is really kind of wrapping up all of the videos I've made this week on what happens in often toxic childhoods with often toxic parents. Parents who you had to walk on eggshells with, parents who were emotionally just neglectful and unsafe or sort of popped in and popped out of your life, who were conditional, critical, you know, you name it. If this is you, you know what I'm talking about. This is not just about how all of us struggle with being a parent and we make mistakes and we screw up. This is about consistent patterns of wounding behavior, really attachment wounds at the core. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I think are the main issues and then I wanna share with you what I have in both of my workbooks from my courses on how I identify what the healing paths and patterns are. And so that is something that I hope you will find helpful. Please know that I know that these videos, right, they only can go so far. A lot of this, I hope, is a jumping off point for you to then sort of decide, okay, I'm going to buy this book or start seeing somebody in therapy or listen to a podcast or start journaling or do some nervous system body work or start exercising to help my anxiety, right? All of it is meant as sort of this, you know, overarching way to help you, I hope heal what happened to you and hopefully live with more peace and more joy and more love in your life. So when we have families with lots of burdens and secrets and lies, right, it be and triggers, it's a very heavy way to walk through life. It's like I said, it's like the child is literally running the show inside. We are adults. Many of us are very high functioning. But even if we aren't, no matter where we are in that spectrum of functioning, the outside world might see one image, but the inside is often this little child that feels unlovable or unloved and or unloved, you know, not good enough, who feels, as I've often said, bad inside in some way or shame-filled. And so that is the lens or the sunglasses we wear to see everything through that lens. That's the first thing we look at is where am I good or not good? Where do I not belong? Where do I have to do more or be better? It's just, it's just like this this marathon we can never, never, a race we can never win. So the first thing is to begin to identify the secrets and burdens and beliefs and triggers I talked about this last week. Which ones resonate for you or to add your own, right? To begin to identify, yes, I do that thing or yes, I am triggered by that thing. Get, get yourself a notebook at CVS or Target or a journal. It can be just about anything or use your computer, right? Number two, honor that it really is a process, but begin to honor that it was not your fault. And here's how I can tell you. You were a child. You had zero power to change anything. Your only job as a child was to survive the environment you were raised in. And as a result, certain things had to happen, but it was not your fault. And I know you can't just often watch a video and go, yeah, it's not my fault. But over time to begin to own that you had no power you were responding in a way that you needed to respond to survive. Number three, work on allowing yourself to feel your feelings. Do your work on how to feel things, how to identify emotions in your body, honoring with each little thing you identify, what do I feel about this thing? What do I feel about that behavior or that adaptation, right? What comes up for me in my body, like I said, in my chest or my head or whatever? Number five, identify what you want to change. What are the things that are not working that you know that these burdens and lies and triggers are, are doing in your life in a way that is not serving you? Number six, work on developing and seeking body soothing nervous system strategies. Those are listed in a lot of my videos on polyvagal theory and attachment. 
but understanding that your nervous system is a baby you came out of the womb with a nervous system that met your parents nervous system and their attachment patterns and you've been responding and feeding off of those your entire life and so that's why you can feel triggered sometimes your body is, is you know it feels triggered for something that you didn't even know was a trigger and then according to polyvagal theory you need to have a story or an explanation so you say oh i'm stressed because a b and c but maybe that's not accurate but your body just responded because when a person raises their voice or or sighs at you or makes you feel less than or rejected you suddenly have a story that you're not good enough even though it may have nothing to do with you. They were just having a bad day and you just happened to be in the room, right? So identify the things that help to soothe your nervous system. Number six, sorry, number seven, make a list of what you're going to do. This is a huge part of my protocol on my remothering protocol, which is it's not just what you say, it's what you do. What do you want to commit to? And you can have lots of self-compassion and grace about how quickly you do these things, but think about, well, I would like therapy, or no, I'd rather do group therapy, or I'd rather do an online course, or I'd rather read a book or try a podcast first. Um, work on assessing your relationships and your life and figuring out which ones do you do these things more in, which ones bring out the best parts of you, and which ones do not. And lastly, to add things also like self-compassion techniques. I always reference selfcompassion.org, Kristen Neff's website. There's a lot of great stuff to do there. Number eight, work on your reparenting strategies and your inner child work that needs to heal. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But understand that as I believe you are the inner child and you are the parent. And so you have to work on healing both of those. Work on unhealthy relationships in your life and behaviors for both yourself and your partners, identifying what is like workable and changeable and acceptable and what is not. And to then set boundaries, number 11, around those relationships with yourself and other people about what you will and will not accept, what you need to change, etc. And then lastly, you have to deal with your parents now. If they are alive and you are still in a very toxic relationship, I just coughed, you must deal with that. You cannot do all of this work and go back into the same dark cave every holiday, every day on the phone, every weekend, whatever, because you need a babysitter or because they, they're going to leave you money. Like you have to make some hard decisions sometimes about the sacrifices and the prices you're the price, the price you're willing to pay. And so working on those relationships is paramount. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're working on healing your inner child and that parent makes you feel like you're this tall, like you're not, you know, not worthy at all, because it's difficult for you to say to your parent, you know what, it's no longer acceptable for you to make comments about my weight or my partner or my parenting. If you don't work on those relationships by boundary setting, ideally, and sort of growing with them to a surface relationship or even ending up in a no contact situation because they are just too wounding, it will be very hard for you to truly heal. You have to trust me when I say it is paramount. And if you don't talk to them anymore because you've got no contact, but you haven't dealt with all of the wounds that got there. So the no contact feels better, but there's still so much pain you're carrying. And so maybe now the parent's not triggering you, but then you take a lot of that pain and you blow at your kids or you blow at your partner more than you'd like to because they trigger you, going back to those triggers I mentioned last week, right? That stuff is so important. So in my course, my really this is the main course on healing and dealing from the trauma of often borderline or narcissistic parents. And you can see I have, I think there's like 75 lessons. There are 75 lessons in the video. But I identify here basically what happens to us, which is basically pointing out the classic complex trauma symptoms we have, the attachment wounds that happen. And I go through all of that from toxic shame and our inner child and and our thoughts and self-sabotage and boundaries and grief. And then this is what I really believe are the things that are in my course and are that even if you don't get my course at all, you can Google these things, right? Or research them. They are inner child work, guided meditations, if that works for you, not classic meditation, but really guided meditations and sometimes affirmations if you like those. Looking at what part of you is responding, relational, the relational work, the parts work, often referred to as kind of similar to internal family systems, which is another therapy protocol that helps us look at the different parts inside. 
reparenting and what I believe is truly remothering because that to me is the core. It could be anyone, but that nurturing, mothering energy that you did or did not receive. Your ideal parent figure, there's some exercises there in my course. Identifying triggers and complex trauma. Managing your emotional flashbacks. You're dealing with your negative cognitions. Many of us are very negative. We are just wired to go to the worst case scenario and then back things up. And that served us in childhood, but if you're always going to the worst case and negative place, it's hard to be you and it's probably hard to be around you, right? Because everything is sort of that, that catastrophizing dynamic, which you had to do. You had to do it in childhood. It just doesn't serve you to always do that in adulthood. And really quickly going back to emotional flashbacks, those are those feeling states where you're triggered back into childhood. So it's not necessarily a memory like a PTSD memory, but you, you know, you just feel like trapped again. Or I always say certain people can make me feel trapped back with my parents in childhood. I can have really bad anxiety as a result of it, especially when people are angry or, or like conflictual because anger wasn't safe in my house. Um, polyvagal techniques, mapping and managing your nervous system. That's all in this workbook too, but you can Google that. That's basically understanding that you have to deal with your body, like I was saying, living in your nervous system. You have to. There's almost no way to heal from trauma without understanding that relationship. Journaling, all of my courses have a ton of journaling prompts. And then exercises for self-exploration, goals, and healing pathways. And so that's kind of more ambiguous, I know it sounds like, but basically it's helping you further understand you know, who am I? What is my identity? And what are my boundaries? And how do I set those? And what things do I honor in myself? And what things do I tend to neglect? And what is my trauma bonding if I have any? What is the grief work I have to do? All of that kind of stuff. So in my other course on remothering ourselves, the goal of this course is to really help you understand how to heal the inner child and the inner parent. That the inner parent speaks to the inner child. And I have developed a three-part protocol which looks at self-nurturing, self-safety, and self-soothing. And each section in, this, in the workbook and the course and everything with the videos and the meditations, it's all about how to honor that in order to heal. It's not just saying, you know, oh, my inner child is getting love today. That's great. But we often have to do and say things, but do things that set up our life in a way that says we are valuable humans and we're not just these broken, unworthy children. And so the self-soothing category is about what I say, feed and care. How do I nourish myself, my body, my self-care, my exercise, my needs, my life? How can I identify what those are? And then how do I begin to implement those things in my life? because many of us weren't given healthy nourishing food or had meals with family or we ate in our rooms a lot or on the go or whatever, or the parent didn't know our favorite meals or we just don't, we just, we're so exhausted and we're struggling with some kind of chronic illness so we neglect our physical needs and we don't feed ourselves well, we don't take a walk, we're struggling, right? The next one is self-safety, protection from harm, looking at your boundaries and relationships and security. How do you set up your life in a way that says, I am worthy of self-protection and honor? And, and we go through what, what all those things are. And lastly, self-soothing, which is learning how to comfort the child and your nervous system, the emotional regulation work. You have to learn to heal because trauma and childhood, it really does live in our bodies. And so, there's also one more course on identifying things that could have happened to you in childhood in terms of, of wounding behaviors and experiences. So please check that course out. It's a free course as well. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it was kind of wordy, but I really wanted to give you all the things that I see that can be helpful to healing our lives. And I thank you so much for being here. Please know that if you kind of connect to any of the videos this last week that I know that it can be a heavy burden to carry. It really is. All of the weight is so much some days. And you don't have to go through it alone. That reaching out to friends and community or even online support groups, all of it can be helpful. But um, you don't have to suffer. And there are ways to begin to slowly but surely, one day at a time, heal those parts inside. And so I thank you for being here. Please stay safe and well. Have a beautiful weekend. And I will see you Monday. Bye, guys.